In the last episode I did some basic testing and fitting of the brushless motor. As things are looking good so far, in this episode we'll be looking to add some sensors to the motor and then neatly packaging everything up. And a little bit of disclosure about this ESC. The first time I powered it up, it let out a pop and some smoke and I do notice that it stalls when starting in some positions. I expect one of the driver poles has died, so what you are seeing in these initial tests is probably not showing the full potential of the motor. A replacement is on its way, so I guess we'll see. Anyway, let's get into it. So to monitor and then ultimately control the speed, I was looking at adding a a magnet uh, a mount for some magnets on the back here. There's some screw holes here, and then possibly a sensor attached to this plate so that the the motor and the mount and the sensor would be uh, one unit. But uh, as I was moving this motor around, it was starting to stick to a few metal things, and then it obviously occurred to me that that this already has magnets inside it. So instead of adding additional magnets to the back here, it seems likely I can use uh, the magnetics, the magnets that are in the uh, outer rotor here, uh, to sense at quite good resolution uh, the speed, acceleration, deceleration, etc. So I have this uh, magnetic viewing film, and if we just put that on here, uh, we can see very clearly uh, the magnetic fields that are being that are available, basically. So I think what I'll do. Let me take a snapshot of that here. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is I'll I'll try to fix a Hall effect sensor on this plate here to uh, sense the magnetic field as it moves past here. So I set up uh, two Hall effect sensors. The first one I have set up with a... Uh, I'll just put a magnet here for the moment and the Hall effect sensor uh, just floating here. And so that will measure the general RPM. And then for this one down here, I have another Hall effect sensor, and it's just using the magnets that are in the outer uh, casing of the uh, of the motor itself. So in that way, I should be able to get fairly uh, should be able to create a fairly granular uh, level of detail as to acceleration and deceleration. And by uh, looking at the relationship uh, between these two Hall effect sensors, I should be able to understand the gear ratio as well. So let's just take a look at that first. So the top is the uh, Hall effect sensor output. I'm not really doing anything here, it's just uh, applying voltage to the Hall effect sensor. No, no signal treatment whatsoever. And then uh, I've coupled it just to make it a bit easier uh, to look at, I've coupled the output as AC. Uh, but as you can see here, so by looking at it this way, I'll be able to get the relationship, and I can check the high and low gear. Uh, as it's got a high and low gear here, obviously the relationship will change, and I'll be able to get the gear ratio as well. So the last test was a bit of a well, it's not a failure because I learned something. I guess it was a success in that sense. But I was thinking about using the external rotor magnets to uh, detect the um, to detect the rotation speed. However, uh, after doing some calculations uh, and looking at the values I got from uh, measuring on the oscilloscope, it, it worked out that the the amount of uh, sort of po pulses per rotation I'm getting out of here was around about ten. But I know there are 12, uh, no, there are 14 uh, magnets in here. So obviously the 10 pulses that I'm receiving against the 14 uh, magnetic poles that should be there is an indication that the internal stator uh, magnetic pulsing and the combination with the external rotor is actually changing that pulse structure, uh, which makes sense, I guess, when you think about it, say, to magnetic drive. So instead I put an optical drive here uh, to measure the rotation speed, to check the uh, the the, um, the ratio between the motor and the output drive. So 
So there we can see the uh, difference in the frequency between the uh, between the the chuck and the motor. And that fits in with about the ratio that I calculated from the gear down in, from the gear down ratio. So so everything sort of looks okay. But as uh, I can't use the external rotor, I'll go back to my original plan and I'll install a fan unit on the back here that has some uh, magnets installed and I'll apply a hole center on that. And I'll put a hole center on that. And uh, hopefully that should give me some accurate measurement, even at slow speed. I think the key thing that I'm trying to get is accurate measurement at slow speed. So here are all the parts that will go in the motor compartment for the mini lathe. We have the motor and the ESC, obviously the bracket and I've pre-tapped a few holes here for the mounts and I've cut it so it's shorter. I obviously drilled the hole for the main shaft. We have the main gear and I've drilled two holes and tap them uh, for these grub screws so that they can latch onto the shaft here and I've ground down I've ground down the uh, key a little bit so that it will fit um, because there is a flat side to the shaft here probably ground it down a little bit too much but in any case you can see that the, the grub screw is pressing here and uh, creating a very tight fit on the shaft in any case so I think that's working fine I have two sensors that I'm putting in the compartment. One is a temperature sensor, a digital type uh, temperature sensor. And I have a linear Hall effect sensor to detect the rotation. So this is a fan that I've uh, that I designed in uh, Fusion 360 and 3D printed. And it worked out pretty good actually. I'm pretty impressed. It will mount directly on There's some holes here. And also, so there are 16 fan blades and I've just lofted uh, a slight angle uh, from the inner to the outer to get the shape. Uh, it's not aerodynamically correct or anything like that. It's just something that I could make physically fit and, and print without having to have supports or anything like that. But I've also made uh, eight compartments. They're friction fit and so for every two blades there's one magnet and they're just, uh, I think there are, there are actually eight neodymium uh, magnets in a pack uh, from, a, from a dollar store basically so it's not an expensive item but hopefully that will provide me uh, even at slow speeds uh, the ability to detect the change in uh, speed of the motor and then I've created these two brackets here which will which screw uh, an overhang on the back here they have a small lip and the idea is that the uh, ESC will sit just behind the motor and the fan will uh, blow air onto the, onto the uh, heat sink here and hopefully keep the whole thing cool. And I have a temperature sensor as I said earlier in any case just to keep monitoring of that. So the, the fan speed is obviously dependent upon the motor speed and I have noticed that the ESC gets hotter at lower speeds um, so I'm not really sure how that's going to work but uh, we'll give it a try. And obviously as it's pushing air uh, this way it will hopefully also create uh, some degree of uh, flow around the motor and hopefully through the motor. In the next uh, section I'll, I'll do a, um, a time lapse of the assembly you can see how it all goes together.
there we have it. Uh, the module is put together. Treat that as a single unit, which I can take out. We've just tied the EC on the back here. But I think you get the idea. The fan here. Pushing some air onto this uh, heat sink. I've made it so that the the EC has airflow all around, so hopefully it'll get rid of any heat. The sensor. And I've brought the connector out through the side here so I can easily access that. And then the temperature sensor sitting up here. So that should hopefully uh, be at the top because it's going to be mounted like that. And uh, get the, the highest temperature in the inside the box basically. Okay, so let's get it in there and see how it goes. So a quick standalone test before I uh, install it in here. See how it goes. So, it all looks pretty stable. Stand alone, anyway. There's quite a bit of quite a bit of air shooting off the side here. So. I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's definitely doing something. So we've got everything in there and aligned. I think it's looking pretty good. Not so bad. So next up I'll be adding one more sensor. Uh, this is the sensor here. Optical sensor. I'm going to have it so it's uh, monitoring the chuck speed. So I'll be able to monitor the chuck speed and the motor speed. And I want to be able to do that um, because it has a high and low speed. And so to get an accurate readout of the display I need to know uh, what gear I'm in. Um, so I was going to put a sensor on the on the switch here, but I've decided instead to go with a sensor on the actual main spindle as well, because then that gives me another point of reference on the speed control, and I can also then uh, use that to uh, confirm which gear it's in when it's uh, when it's running as well. So this case here uh, sits over the cover over the top of that main shaft there, and just inside here there's some space where I can mount this sensor. So I'll mount the sensor on here, and I had some aluminium tape, but I don't actually, I couldn't actually find it, so I'll use this, uh, this copper tape and put it on the shaft here as the reflector. Okay, so I've already put the back cover on here and closed everything up. And I've extended these wires here so that they pass through. There's a hole out the front there. And tidy things up a little bit with a cable tie. And I've modified the uh, original back cover. This is the original back cover here. Uh, originally it had one hole here uh, for access to remove the brushes, I assume. I've added one more hole and I've put some uh, mesh on there and just used some pretty nasty hot glue to keep that in place. 
Uh, and it's fairly open at the bottom already, so I guess the expectation is that the cool air will enter from the bottom and the fan will blow it through and uh, with any luck exit these holes here and the mesh should stop any uh, metal particles getting in there. And then at the front here, let me just roll it over, you can see I've got all of the control cables coming out, I haven't terminated them yet, and the uh, power going to the ESC. So the next stage will be to get the power supply mounted on here and uh, start working on the control system. Well that's a wrap for this episode. If you've made it all the way to the end, then thanks so much for watching. In the next episode we'll be breaking out the STM32 blue pill and do some testing with what we've built so far. So I hope to see you then. And please subscribe if you think the content is interesting to you.